Hit the Nexus! <sighs> yeah, that was me after yet another night of playing Wild Rift. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? As you can see in the title, this is a gaming test on this here Poco F3, actually sponsored by Poco. They reached out and said, we want you to try out a bunch of mobile games on the F3 and see what your experience is like. And here I am sharing it with all of you. Now, I don't do these gaming tests very often. This is obviously not a full review of this phone, but it will give you a look into what gaming looks like on the Poco F3. Also, it's an opportunity for me to show you what games I'm currently playing and what you might end up seeing in a lot of my content. But before I can even start to play all of that, well, I have low battery, so why don't we go ahead and get this thing plugged in because it does support 33 watt wired fast charging. And while the phone is getting charged, why don't I go ahead and just go through some of the top level specs. This is the phone that has the Snapdragon 870, a seven nanometer process, also capable of 5G connections. It should be able to provide us with all of the power that we need for all of the games that I'm going to show you in this video. It is backed by six or eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 or 256 gigabytes of onboard storage. Of course, great gaming performance on a smartphone is nothing without a great display. And the one here is an AMOLED display capable of 120 hertz refresh rate. One thing to bear in mind is that the display is a full HD plus panel. You're not getting the highest resolution on here, but if we're looking at this from a gaming lens, if you look at monitors and laptop displays right now, the lower resolution displays on gaming laptops prioritize the higher refresh rate. That way you get the super fluid look in your games. And I think that's more or less what informs the choice of having this AMOLED display on the Poco F3. I think it works perfectly fine as you're going to see later on in the video. And also you're going to hear what the experience is like because I did make sure to record the audio coming from the phone using the stereo speakers. The final few bits are the 4,520 milliamp hour battery on here, which we are charging up right now at fast 33 watt charging. And the battery finally got to 100% in just under an hour from the 15 to 18% that I left it at after playing all night last night and forgetting to plug it back in. So with the battery finally back up to 100%, why don't we go ahead and jump into some games? Down here, you see this icon for Game Turbo, and that's where we're going to be spending most of our time. Game Turbo, despite having a one by one selection screen when it comes to games, I would prefer like a list, does have a lot of options once you hit that gear icon on the top right. Of course, there is the Game Turbo toggle itself that will turn on and off all of the different features that are available to your games. Performance mode settings allow you to optimize the Wi-Fi, the touch controls, and enhance the audio both in and out. And one last thing that I did want to show you from the Game Turbo app itself is that you can select specific games and change up a couple of settings there. Not only are you able to change the touch resistant area that your palm might be hitting so that it doesn't actually register a touch, but you can also get the visuals enhanced by adding brightness and much more vivid colors, which is something that I use a little bit later with in particular Genshin Impact. So let's go ahead and get into a couple of, let's say simple games. They are vertical games, but I say simple because when you go into their settings, there aren't many options for changing the graphic settings. We'll start off with a very recent release and that is Crash Bandicoot on the run. Now we all know Crash Bandicoot and the world of Crash Bandicoot in this vertical run style game uh, really shows off some wonderful colors coming out of the AMOLED screen in particular. <laughs> So far so good on the graphics front, I haven't had any slowdowns or anything like that on this particular game. So let's ramp things up just a little bit with another vertical game that I'm sure you've seen me play a number of times before. Shin Megami Tensei Liberation DX2. A great little mobile RPG with admittedly a lot of gacha elements, but it was developed by the same people who made Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royal. This is the first time we'll see some graphics customization, even if it's just low, medium, and high. We have it on high, and as you can see, the Snapdragon 870 is not skipping a beat. But now let's go ahead and jump into the games that I know a lot of you are thinking of for this type of gaming test. We'll jump right into Call of Duty Mobile. Now I haven't played this in a little while, but once we get into the graphic settings, it does allow us to change up quite a few of the settings. This will be the first game that allows us beyond the resolution to change up the frames per second. And now Call of Duty Mobile can get up to that 120 frames per second mark that we want. Charlie, Hunter Killer Drone on standby. 
It's at this point that the phone does start to get quite warm. It's not hot, it's not uncomfortable at all, uh, but it is something that I keep in mind as I move into more intensive games. The next one is PUBG Mobile. PUBG Mobile is one of the main games that can go above and beyond in both resolution and frame rate. You actually have to pick your poison here. What you have is either Ultra HD quality, but then you can't go max on the frame rate, or you just go HDR for some extra colors and vividness, uh, and then you can go extreme on the frame rate. I decided to take advantage of the fact this is a 120Hz refresh rate screen, and I kept it at HDR at extreme frame rate. So with those games out of the way, I'm actually going to switch things up a little bit, take my foot off the accelerator a little, and show a couple of other ways of gaming on a phone like this. With all of the power and all of the specs that you can get in this very affordable device, there are so many different ways that you can game. It's not just what you can find in the Play Store, it's also beyond that with things like game streaming. We'll start off with some remote play. Uh, in this case, I'm actually using my at-home Wi-Fi mesh Wi-Fi network to connect to my PS5 and enjoy Yakuza 6 The Song of Life. Obviously your experience when it comes to game streaming like this depends more on the quality of your Wi-Fi connection in the case of remote play uh, than it does on the actual raw specs in the device. Things get a little bit more challenging when I put the phone inside of a Razer Kishi so I can play on Xbox Game Pass Beta, no longer streaming locally, and this time I'm going to play a brand new game that was just released on Game Pass, Outriders. And then you can also go back in time a little bit by throwing something like Dolphin Emulator on here, and in my case, getting restarted with Metroid Prime. In this case though, I went ahead and uh, put it on one of my favorite game controllers, the 8-bit Doe SN30 Pro Plus. This is one of my favorite controllers to use with everything, including mobile. Even beyond this, there are so many classic official titles being released in the Google Play Store. I'm a huge proponent for using mobile gaming as a way of not only revisiting those old titles, but maybe you can actually double back and experience ones that you weren't able to when you were younger. But now for the main event. We are obviously going to get into a couple of the main titles that I know is on a lot of your guys' mind after PUBG Mobile and Call of Duty Mobile. We'll start off with Old Faithful, Genshin Impact. The one thing about Genshin Impact is that it doesn't do higher than 60 frames per second. I wish that it would go higher than that, really take advantage of the 120 hertz refresh rate on this screen, but at the very least it's a very vibrant and beautiful game with its art style that will work really well on this AMOLED screen. And as you can see here, I went into the game turbo settings, made sure to bring it up to extreme on the visual enhancements. It's after getting a couple of quests done in Genshin Impact that I check on the temperature of the device. The heat is more or less localized to this top portion of the phone, actually right next to the camera, uh, and I got it up to around 110, 111 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. That's not super high, like again, it's not making my gaming uncomfortable, it's just something that I want to show you and have you keep in mind if you are sensitive to the thermals of your device. So finally, I've been itching to get back to it this entire time I can finally get us back to League of Legends Wild Rift. It's funny, I never even really played League of Legends before this, I barely played uh, the other version, but on mobile, Wild Rift is a wonderful example of just how far mobile gaming has come. It also gives you quite a bit of control over graphic settings. Now again, we have here 60 frames per second on this particular device, even though the game can clearly get up to 120 frames per second. Now I've played the 120 FPS on other devices, which tells me that the game just is not officially supporting the Poco F3 just yet. Hopefully that changes pretty soon, but for now we're going to stick with the official 60 frames per second. 
For anybody wondering, I'm very new to LOL in general, um, so I'm still kind of getting a feel for it. I'm very much enjoying myself though, and I prefer to be a jungler most of the time. And right now, I really like using Sin Zhao. Despite a good start, we unfortunately lost that match. It just got really hard later in the game, uh, but that will round out every game that I wanted to show you in this gaming test. Now at the end of that session, which was somewhere between three and four hours, I got the battery down to about 50%. Right now it's actually at 48. Uh, so after all of that time, I was able to get around three hours of screen on time which has been more or less the experience that I've had so far. With all of the nights that I've been playing Wild Rift, I was able to get around six hours of screen on time just playing straight. But with five to six hours of screen on time, especially with all of the graphic settings at their max that I can put them at at least right now, uh, this is actually pretty impressive as far as battery life is concerned. And so there you have it, a look at the Poco F3 through the lens of mobile gaming in particular. A lot of you out there have already said in my comment sections that you think Poco's latest offerings could be really great budget gaming devices, and I tend to agree. There are many gaming devices out there that are all priced way high, and this is going to undercut them by quite a bit. So if you want to save a little bit of money but not skimp out on the performance on the core aspects of a good mobile gaming experience, the Poco F3 just might be a great way of doing that. Shout out to Poco once again for sponsoring this video. Let me know all of your thoughts on the Poco F3 in the comment sections down below. Also, tell me what mobile games you're playing right now, and I'm sure the vast majority of them, if not all of them, are going to work really well on this Snapdragon 870 powered Poco F3. With all that said, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other, and enjoy your tea, everybody.